of Directors meetings of the CPTA in order. Uh, today's Wednesday, June 29th. Uh, we'll start with the uh, approval of the minutes of the prior meeting on May 25th. Can I get a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Any additions, subtractions, changes? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Approved. Uh, we'll move on to recognitions. Sorry? Yeah, before we do that, just to FYI, we're back in the room. Right? Great. Uh, there's a lot of things that pulled and pushed and moved, so there may be some sound issues for those, audio issues for those of you that are remote. It's a work in progress. So, you guys can hear us great. If you can't, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, first up. Sorry, Brian. Brian Green. Brian was sitting, he was early, he was sitting outside. He said, I'm, I'm the top guy today, right? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> not, not even close. Okay. All right, good. So Brian's 25 years, which is a long time, but as you'll see in a few minutes, not close. No. But Brian started with, <laughs> so these, you know, uh, I should give you a background, I guess. But Vanessa, Jamie, and probably soon Emily Benito uh, interview people before they become. These are really a lot of times in, in their own words. I kind of paraphrase them. But, but Brian started with us as he says, the number one song on the hit charts was Elton John's Candle in the Wind. <laughs> that was 1997. Brian joined the team familiar, in a familiar way. Um, as a weekend part-time employee. We were talking a little bit about that mm -hmm. uh, before uh, the meeting. And after about eight months, Brian was full-time and worked in System 2 as an operator. He, he filmed the Saratoga Trolley. Uh, George, uh, George and I remember that very well. Uh, the Saratoga Trolley is still operational. Uh, he then drove, some of you remember, who remember, Shuttle Clock, which was a service that operated on Wolf Road. Uh, I'll tell you, marketing, Guys and gals, that uh, it was a board member that handled the shuttle. They got in love. He was one of the kind. Um, after working on the road for a long time, Brian uh, got behind the desk and did star reservation and dispatching. Did that for five or six years before moving to a fixture supervisor. Uh, he was 13 years in that job. Uh, did a lot of work as special events coordinator. And I don't know, I still think that. Is the call? Yes, I still uh, that. He still does a lot of that work. We have special events, and we have lots of them. Just basically turn the details over to Brian, and you can rest assured that it's, it's going to get done. Um, but when he was promoted to management, um, he was almost immediately found his way in the superintendent star. So sort of back where he started, he was a managing star, uh, and now is superintendent of street amenities and special. Anything that we do uh, that requires sort of jack of all trades, knowing how to juggle around resources, we call on Brian. Uh, he credits his longevity with CDTA to the stability of the company, the friends he has made along the way, and the opportunities he's had to, uh, to advance in the company. Uh, in his free time, some of you may know this, Brian runs a pretty successful appliance repair company. I don't know how he does it, but he does that. You can tell me about a snow plow. He volunteers at Blessed Sacrament Church uh, and spends a lot of time with his five-year-old granddaughter. Um, he says he's here for the long haul. He was telling me that he wants to be here as long as I have. I said, Brian, well, be careful of that. Um, but in the meantime, 25 years under his belt, pretty successful guy, and a key part of what we do here at St. Thank you. to the older guys. I'm doing this uh, alphabetically. I think that's the right way. So there's a tie right for them. 35 years. I remember kicking off Swiper. Yes. What the heck is a Swiper? That's right. Back in the day, we had flash cards. Those were about the past. Swiper was one of Mike's. Oh, yeah. So 
might join the workforce at Grand Union when he was 16 and worked his way up to the promotion man until the right guys might work at Grand Union until he was laid off. And Grand Union basically said, we're out of here. Well, our employees are on their own. Mike's father-in-law, who I remember well, worked at Stevie J as a mechanic. Uh, and he said, there might be an opening. You know, check it out. Something about accounts payable. Fast forward, uh, after starting here as an accounts payable clerk for 10 years, Mike had worked his way up to treasury supervisor. Our treasury is down on the first floor, and glassed in, and all the money comes in there, and lots of other stuff. And gets sorted and counted. <coughs> We kind of take a lot of that for granted, but I sometimes wonder where we would be without all the good people who make sure all the money we're supposed to have, we have. Uh, but Mike, Mike uh, ran that operation for quite a period of time. And he says here, he enjoyed the challenge of counting money and getting it to our banks every day. He estimates that over 250 million $1 bills have passed through CDPA in his 25 years in the Treasury Revenue Operation. Business. So think about that. 250 million one dollar bills. I started to try to check that. <laughs> I just I just believe. You got to have it. I got to have it. Mike is now our manager of revenue operations, and it kind of shows you how we've changed. Right? He oversees the daily operation of our treasury, as well as managing all of our sales, uh, navigator sales. He manages the navigator mobile app and coordinates all the retail outlets. We have lots of retail outlets that sell things uh, on our behalf. So we're still, I don't know, 50% cash, a lot of cash, but 50% of that business is now prepay or pay as you go, or all kinds of different ways to pay. A self-declared behind-the-scenes guy, Mike says being in the finance world uh, is a perfect fit for him. CDTA has helped him grow professionally and offered him an opportunity to provide for his family. Uh, he <laughs> He equates, he's been here a long time, he equates the working atmosphere as that of a family that we play, these are his words, we play, we love, and we fight like a family. He enjoys golfing and uh, is a long time New York Giant fan. Also a Cincinnati Red Bull. It's a tough year. It's, a, it's <laughs> always a tough year. It's a tough year. Uh, and he'll watch any baseball game he can find. I caught that and said, yeah, we didn't say any Red baseball game. He was a local guy. Yeah, I know. Like, um, he and his wife Janet recently celebrated their 35th wedding anniversary. His daughter lives over in Rhode Island, so he gets a chance to get over there. His son works here at a law firm in Albany. Uh, another reference here that I don't think we want to do, won't quite, will not consider retiring until I do. Uh, so he'll be sticking around for a little bit. Um, 35 years, Mike, congratulations. You're part of the revenue team, that's for sure. Chris um, learned that you know, the mechanical know-how 
basically what do they get from that? What takes their bus out the road? Uh, and he's really given our customers a smooth ride as a result. He currently works in, and Pat, I hope you can hear us, he currently works in the paint shop, uh, painting buses and doing all the body work on the damaged vehicle. Now, some of you may not know that you know, we have our own you know, highly professional uh, paint body shop. It's, it's equivalent to anything you would take your car to. And Chris, Chris has been there with Start. Oh, yeah, right about 20 years. About 20 years out. Did you intersect with when Pat was there? Yep. yep. I trained Pat. You trained Pat. <laughs> <laughs> Pat must have yeah. Pat, Pat probably came on the screen. Um, Chris says there are a host of helpful people at CDPA, and he feels that that family type atmosphere can be really helpful. And he enjoys returning the favor when people ask him for help with CDPA. He's been a regular on our award circuit. You name the award, he's won it. Um, he enjoys in his spare time concerts and picnics and boating and having a good time. Cars. The car. I love that car. What kind of car is that again? Camaro. Camaro, you know, the one that, that <laughs> I know when he leaves. <laughs> it's great. Uh, it's loud. Uh, he ranks the uh, 49ers and Yankees as his number one sports team. I'm sorry about that. Uh, he enjoys taking trips to the city to see the Yankees play. I'm sorry about that. And to get some quality shopping time. Um, but a 35-year guy who's made his mark on this company, uh, we were talking about this outside, uh, comes to work every day, does what he's supposed to do, high-quality work. Um, he's the kind of guy, and all the, the three of these guys, we count on every single day, rain, snow, in between. These are post office type employees. Mm -hmm. the post office should be Chris Heidnick. Thank you. So that's uh, 95 years of, of you know know-how, experience. Uh, one guy paints them, the other guy you know puts them in the right spot, and the other guy stacking dollar bills, making sure they get to the banks. So three great people. And they want, they want out. <laughs> <That's the best. laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah. All right, the uh, uh, next item on our agenda are the committee reports, and I'll kick it off with the Board Operations Committee, then met on June 13th. Uh, we reviewed the committee agendas and activities for the June meeting last week and today. Uh, the summer meeting schedule was reviewed, and we're taking July off, uh, subject to the call of the chair. We will meet again in August, or in August from now. Wednesday, August 31st, so two full months off. That's just, just the board, that's not you like everybody it. else. Oh, that's all I thought was all of us. <laughs> uh, we'll uh, we'll uh, let you know when the committee meetings will be held. We'll try to do everything in one day later in the month of August. Uh, we're talking about August 24th, if you want to pass one on your calendar. Um, to comply with recent changes to New York State Open Meetings Law, we will require that members attend all board of directors meetings monthly, in person. We will maintain our uh, Microsoft Teams function, and members can participate virtually, but attendance does not count towards a quorum, and they will not be able to vote on action items. Our new attendance and retention programs have been well received. The pilot program has had a 74% participation rate from employees. Uh, retention efforts are ongoing. We continue to focus our efforts on work-life balance issues, and these programs will take a few months of operation before we can draw any conclusions, but uh, we're looking at it each month. Uh, CARB provided us with an update on Warren County. We continue to meet and discuss the merger with Glens Falls officials, having conversations with Warren County supervisors, uh, lots of details to sift through, more to come uh, throughout the summer. Our next meeting of the Board Operations Committee will be scheduled in August. Any questions about the meeting? <clears throat> that meeting anyway? Not. Then we'll move on to the um, performance um, monitoring audit committee. Ms. Figueroa. Thank you. Um, the committee met at noon on June 22nd here at 110 Waterloo Avenue and on Microsoft Teams. Uh, we have uh, five consent agenda items today. Uh, the first is approval of a of uh, purchase of articulated buses. 
for the Washington Western BRT service. Um, the staff recommends purchasing 17 60 foot buses to meet the service needs of our new line. The cost per bus is $922,000, which includes delivery and extended warranties. Uh, so we need a motion to approve the purchase of 17 articulated buses from New Flyer of America for a total cost not to exceed $15,675,496. So we get a motion on that? So moved. Thank Second. you, General. Second. Thank you, George. Any uh, questions, discussion, comments? Big purchase? It's exciting. Plus, plus, yeah. 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 We've got the new base. Such information on our website, just the general principle kind of look at it, we're buying new buses type thing. Yeah, the, well, there's several different spots. The, the, the board meeting minutes are posted, and then there's a news section where Jamie will have uh, the answer is yes, multiple places. Yeah, just one. Yeah. Everybody always asks that question for some reason. Everybody asked that question. Oh, which one? Are you post information? No, no. Are you getting new buses and what's going on? Always. <laughs> every year. Yep, every year. No, I don't know how many articulated buses are in the fleet right now. We're gonna, this, when we take delivery of these 16, we'll be over 40. Wow. What's the exact number, Dave? Right now we have 14. 14 plus 16 coming, that puts us to 30, and 17 puts us to, wow, that's right, almost 50. 47. Pretty quick. Yeah. Anything else? All those in favor of uh, Resolution 25, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Approved. We'll move on to the next item. Okay, next item is approval of the contract for BRT shelters. Um, our contract for the manufacturing installation of BRT shelters is expiring and a new contract is required. The staff recommends a sole source contract to our incumbent, Duo Guard, based on their ability to provide same style shelters uh, used in other BRT locations. Uh, the staff determined that the prices were fair and reasonable. Uh, so we need a motion to approve a two-year contract with three individuals <coughs> to do a guard in Tampton, Michigan, for an amount not to exceed $2.7 million. I'll make that motion. Okay, thank you. Can we second? Second. Okay. My recollection from the committee meeting is that this is just an order being, it's not it's an order being placed, it's just right. a contract to person. Sets up the contract and we buy stuff off the contract. Okay. And the next action item kind of explains sort of the whole picture. Because apples with the RT, we've got the purple one, and now we have the swarm. And okay. this is expected, right? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is the line that's uh, <coughs> Anything else? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? It's approved. Okay, next item is approval of the contract for the rental rail station top deck maintenance. Um, the top deck of the rental rail station parking garage needs preventative maintenance and repairs due to normal wear and tear. Uh, we have had some issues with the membrane and the manufacturer recommends an experienced vendor for these repairs. Um, the staff recommends PCC contracting, which has extensive experience with parking structures. Um, so at this time, we need a motion to approve a one-year contract to PCC Contracting Incorporated of Schenectady, New York, for an amount not to exceed $106,428. Okay, motion on that. So, thank you, Mike. Second? Second. Joe? Garage. Yeah. Um, top deck. Yeah, well, I thought we had a good discussion about <coughs> this rather than the garage and top deck. I think we've come to the realization that because it is literally a roadway, a bridge, whatever, in addition to that's the issue, right? And um, you can go way back and point to a bunch of things. But we have to live with that. We're going to budget for uh, maintenance and repairs every year. We use it, we use it, we don't roll it over. But you know, the, the membrane issue and all the other issues are not going to go away. 
And this happens to every exposed parking deck, every bridge, every concrete highways. In fact, the life was slow. And, you know, Chris shared, you know, we've been visiting other uh, facilities, and you know, we've learned that you know, some garages close their top. They don't use their top deck. We don't have that one. It's possible. So, you know, $100,000 a year given your activity, it is $100,000 a year. Uh, Let me get one time committed. Look at an outside consultant of some sort to get like their opinion on the deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We're in relatively good shape, but and Joe has some questions. One thing we know is that we pretty much eliminate. That's an actually a big deal. It's as good as you can get. If you can stop it leaking, that should make everybody happy. They're really difficult to build. I mean, there's specialized contractors that work for them in these types of situations. Yeah, I don't know what the alternative would have been or could have been. They're not going to arch your quarterback. There is a 20 something yeah. years. You know, Rogers right. is plus 20 years old. Yeah. I mean, they're falling down in Troy. I mean, we know what, what garages are like. Right. So, sorry. Can you just uh, answer me? Why, why is this item coming to the board? I thought items typically under uh, 150,000 go up to the board. It's over 100. So it's 100. It's 100. Yeah, it just makes it. It just makes it. I'm kind of glad it did. It's a reasonable amount. Yeah. yeah. It's not a lot of money. Right. We build it into the budget. Well, we can talk about that. I think the rail station should have Just the looks of the, it looks, people are starting to take care of 
the town, the village. Um, and nothing but good about them. We haven't heard one negative comment. So, you know, improving them is. And we're learning. You know, we're learning as we go. You know, the, the, the conditions along Route 5 are vastly different. The Lansingburg and sure as heck is different than, you know, Brevard and Washington, as, you know, Ross can tell you. you know, so we're, we're adjusting. You know, a large enclosure doesn't work everywhere with, you know, at least the you know, lights to it. It's lit up and it looks wonderful. In some neighborhoods, you have to tone it down a bit. So we're, we're trying to evolve and change as we go. We're listening to the community as best we can. Thanks, Morgan. It's good to pay attention to, uh, to the station, certainly in downtown Schenectady. We're involved with the downtown pit and clearing up the area on State Street where there's a lot of pigeons that kind of accumulate under the, under the bridge. Yeah, pigeons. And, uh, so, so they're every week cleaning up the entire area, which is great. It's wintertime. We have a whole separate program in place to try to keep it accessible to people. So I think it does score a lot of, a lot of points, and it's, it is very important. And that's why you may have noticed uh, the, the city of Schenectady and that's what we're going to be using. Because a lot of the work is, uh, you know, community improvements. I keep calling these public works projects because in a lot of ways they are. Uh, intersection improvement is part of the project, for example. We, we don't, you know, we're not the experts on the intersection. The city of Schenectady is where Metroplex might have something to do with it. So that's why we have that sort of idea. Clean, eat, and save, right, Pete? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Must be an economic point. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else on this topic? All of the favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? An abstention that's approved. Yes. Your recusal is standing. Okay. Got it? Okay. Um, next item is approval of the drug and alcohol. Policy. Uh, the annual review of the drug and alcohol policy is required by federal regulation and CBTA requirements. There was only one procedural change made to the policy document, um, and the revised policy is included in your packet. Um, we need a motion to approve the drug and alcohol policy as revised. Got a motion on that? So moved. Second? Peter, thank you. Done every year, right? Every yeah, year, and you still can't smoke pot. <laughs> it's the question we get. It's amazing. Well, sure, it's legal now. So oh, it's, it's legal, legal now. You still can't smoke pot, right? Just like you're not supposed to have four kids. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor of the resolution, say aye. 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 <laughs> Any opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Uh, moving along here. The investment committee, uh, the committee met on June 27th, and we'll provide a summary to the, uh, to the board in a week or so following the end of the quarter. Uh, admitted, we had administrative discussion items. Uh, the first one was annual accident review. We had several reviews. <laughs> This committee meeting. So Rich Nasso gave the annual report on accidents. Um, there were 438 accidents in fiscal year 2022, an increase of 27. Preventable accidents increased by 47. Uh, most common preventable accidents, 25% uh, of them, occurred on the property. So they were basically not involved with other people or on the street. They were just, you know, hitting a mirror, doing whatever. Um, the uh, initiatives for fiscal year 23, which is the current year, uh, that will aim to uh, reduce accidents include piloting a new crash avoidance system uh, and piloting a new mirrorless bus. Uh, so the report is in your packet. If anybody has any questions on the report, I'm sure they can direct them to Carl and to Rich. <laughs> Not to <I'll> me. <laughs> Ceremony, right? The state, and we, that was just a, a 
amazing, terrific. It was it was acknowledging folks who had avoided accidents, all that stuff. But they are determining that are not non avoidable accidents. How are they considered? There's avoidable and there's non avoidable, right? How does that factor in with that? The people that were there are no accidents. Zero. So not not even the non avoidable. Right. They may uh they get a Preventable stumble. No, I don't mind preventable. Preventable. I'm sure Rich can back me up. Rich on that. Gold medal winner. Is that an accident free? Preventable, non preventable, or do they get any? Uh, you're 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 allowed to have a couple of non preventable accidents, but you can't have any preventable accidents to win any of the wars. Not so much. Good good ask. It's amazing. Either way, I mean, these multiple your award winners are just mind blowing. Somewhere we have, uh, we can tell you like the average number of miles and so on goes. It's a pieces thing. Think of yourself like that. Uh, I wouldn't call it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I thought you were going to ask about the mirrorless bus. Uh, I'm very yeah, 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 yeah. quick exactly. Lance bail me out. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's, or or yeah. somebody bail me out. Uh, it's kind of intruding, right? There are no mirrors. So envision that bus with no mirrors. It's basically a video display uh, inside the vehicle. Uh, probably with better view than what you see yeah. Yeah. But uh, these guys are going to get a couple of things later. They haven't told me how much they cost. <laughs> How does it work with depth perception? I mean, does it give measurements on the screen or things too? It seems like it would be tough there, to get adjusted. There, there are some like lines that you see in the mirror to give you an idea of where like the, the, the rear wheels are, where the rear of the bus is, and then it extends like three car lengths back. So it gives the driver, you know, a better sense of comfortability of knowing that they can turn, they can make line Changes, line changes without any interference with other oncoming vehicles. We're, Rich NASA is extremely excited about it. We're, we're not sold yet, but you know, we share Rich's enthusiasm. <laughs> we do. But, but we, this is something that we need, we need to know about. And I think we're on the cutting edge. I'm always worried about being on the cutting edge. Well, and anything that helps improve safety. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And the mirror thing, you know, back to the preventability thing, I don't know what percentage of our preventable accidents are hit, hit in the mirror, mirror hitting something. So the mirrors extend out, you know, with the freeway. So they're, they're eliminated. Kind of thing is a little tighter, a little, hopefully a little easier next time. How are people getting the exercise, this exercise, these days with all the backup mirrors? I said, that's, that's part of my exercise. <laughs> On the other hand, I mean, can't do it anymore. It's a good thing. <laughs> well, on the other hand, I don't know how many workers comp. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, right. 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 safety things could actually work against the show. I assume the drivers are brought into the conversation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 they know that yeah. part of this. This is a pilot, I guess. They had some issues with people with bifocals. Yeah. They're not responding quick enough. But they'll work that out, I'm sure. <clears throat> okay, if there are other, yeah, no other well, questions. questions on the, on that. He's got more, right? I uh, will uh, move forward with the next one, which was the annual workplace safety report. Um, so Jack Brogan uh, gave the annual workplace safety report. Uh, work injuries increased slightly this year, um, with back and knee injuries most common. Uh, the number of claims has been consistent over the past few years. Uh, compensation paid to employees because of the workplace injury remains the most expensive cost. Uh, followed by scheduled loss of use of warrants. Uh, workplace initiatives for 
Fiscal year 23 uh, include uh, improvement of employee contacts after reported act incidents uh, and uh, to conduct uh, quarterly facility assessments. Um, and that report is also in the packets. Uh, if you have any questions, those get to go to Jack. <laughs> any questions? Okay, so next, uh, monthly management report. Uh, we had our uh, usual report from Mike Collins, who uh, gave a monthly management report. MRG was 43% uh, over budget for the year. Um, custom repairs are 12% over budget, and the rental rail station is 38% over budget. Of course, all of those budgets were reduced. Um, they're not what they were a few years before the pandemic, so, but they're still generated. Uh, wages are about even this month, uh, workers' compensation is under budget due to plane recoveries. Um, and we are in a good financial position and we'll make a budget adjustment in the fall to adjust for changes in state operating assistance. Any questions for Mike on the finances? We don't know that the MRT will continue to be so amazing. <laughs> we, had a, we had a pretty good construction because of the uh, pluses, you know, right. pluses aren't always great, uh, but Mike explained, certainly explained it all to us, and Dave didn't say anything, so. <laughs> <laughs> I just go by colors, Joe. Yeah. Green is good, Green red is not. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Plus it makes it easy for me. Pluses are usually good. Mike is a little more cool towards him than I am. I'll take Okay, if there are no questions on the financial report, uh, we'll move to the monthly non-financial performance report. Chris Desney provided the non-financial report. Uh, fixed group ridership is up 25%. Uh, star ridership is up 22%. Uh, fixed group on-time performance is at 76%, and star on-time performance is at 77%. Uh, we had missed trips are higher than normal due to manpower challenges continue to be, and we expect this to continue for the next few months. So, any questions for Chris? Yes, yep. yes find me. <laughs> Can't turn my neck, you see. I need that hair. <laughs> <laughs> right. Any questions for Chris on that? <coughs> okay, then that concludes my report, and we'll be meeting in August, whatever, on the 24th. Good report, thank you. Uh, we'll move on to uh, Community Stakeholder Relations Committee. Georgie Newton's going to make a presentation. Jackie finished dinner today. So uh, we met on Thursday, June 23rd at 1115, both in person and via Microsoft Teams. Jamie Castle provided a presentation of her new employee communications app, Link 1A. <laughs> <laughs> Transportation and access for young people 
from KIPP Charter School to attend swimming lessons. Um, the next meeting of the committee will be held on Wednesday, August 24th at 11.15 a.m. in person here at 110 Water Lake Avenue and also by a Microsoft Teams option. That concludes my report. I'll open it up for comments or discussion. Thank you. Everyone likes them. Our final committee report is strategic and operational planning. Uh, Mike Trout. Jane, thank you. Uh, strategic and operational planning committee committee met last Thursday, June 23rd, 12 p.m. here at 110 Water Lake Ave and the uh, Microsoft Teams. We had two administrative discussion items, first in the Montgomery County service update. Uh, Ross Farrell gave an update on the service. Montgomery County's major employment and population center is in Amsterdam. The area, the area is lower income, somewhat isolated. The neighborhoods are walkable, but major destinations are beyond walking distance. City bus service for those residents was discontinued in 2018. We will be operating four new routes, uh, three neighborhood and one express, coupled with universal access agreements with the Amsterdam School District and St. Mary's Hospital. The 600 bus is a neighborhood belt. The 601 bus will go up Route 30 to retail districts. The 602 bus will connect Amsterdam to Schenectady via Route 5, and the 560 bus will be an express to downtown New Albany. Most frequencies are 60 minutes, and service will commence on August 28th, as uh, previously mentioned. Our second administrative discussion item is the Washington Western BRT construction update. Jeremy, Jeremy Smith gave an update on Washington Western BRT construction. Previously completed projects include the Crossgate Station relocation, Harriman West PTEC connecting the state office campus to New Albany, and the downtown house expansion that also includes three, uh, excuse me, and the downtown New Albany campus. We are wrapping up a 25,000 square foot uh, addition to the Albany garage. That includes three new in-ground articulated lifts and two bus washes. We also added a new foreman's office, a refresh of the second floor, and new signage and lighting upgrades um, to the front of the building and on the roof. The garden way at U Albany is also underway and includes a dedicated bus lane, a forest multi-use path, landscaping, and a new, new station. We will also be constructing the remainder of the BRT stops to include new pads and stations, rebranding of existing stations, and roadway improvements. Finally, in 2023, we will be creating a new roundabout at the end of the Northway and Crossgates Mall Road, uh, which will be uh, a welcome uh, addition as that is a scene of many accidents coming off the Northway. Uh, the next meeting of the committee will be August 24th at a time to be determined. And that concludes my report. Anybody? Yeah. <clears throat> Anybody have any questions? Who is, who is going to do the roundabout design and build and all that? Design is putting that out. That's all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Boy. Who's. Who's going to supervise the project? DOT or us or Craig Manning or someone? We oversee the project with Craig Manning. They do the construction admin and inspection. Oh, um, okay. Adam Slade, our, our construction manager, oversees the, the construction of the project. Thanks. But there will be appropriate sign offs by municipalities, state, yeah. and work where necessary. Sure. When's that slated to start? Uh, as soon as we can in the spring, so we'll, we'll say April 1st, but if we have the opportunity to start in March, we'll start in March. Really? Get all the permits and everything already, apparently. Yeah, okay. yeah, so all the permits are already in place. We had planned to start uh, this summer, but due to lead times, um, we weren't able to. Oh, good. So I guess if you want evidence of our public works capabilities, we can build it around. Well, 
for funding a roundabout uh, one of the more difficult intersections in the region. Yeah, that's a big deal. So I mean, the intent is to get buses through quicker, but you know, who are you kidding? Buses are going to do quicker and so the automobiles are going to be jealous. And one thing about Montgomery County, Amsterdam, we are establishing new routes in the old neighborhood. Is that is that what? New routes in neighborhoods. Yeah. New routes. No. Well, brand new routes in the existing neighborhoods. Okay. Thank you. We'll move on to uh, CPL report. Thanks, Jamie. This is amazing. The, the committee reports basically cover my my report, so I can kind of breeze through. Um, I guess I was just thinking here. Ten years ago, if you were struck me a purple line, it might have been the only report. It might have been, you know, in every committee. And tons of details. The same details are here, but it's amazing to me that there's a bunch of other stuff happening at the same time. Chris and I were talking this morning. That's what's different. There's just so much activity here that sometimes it's difficult to keep it all keep it all straight. And keeping the company in line with what's happening is now the management issue. Because uh, we have a lot of things going on. Montgomery County, we're getting ready to unveil our car share program drive. Scooters are new and five hundred bikes are Deployed, I think 100 e bikes are on their way. Uh, it's, it's a challenge to work, it's hard. Uh, but I, I think it's what's making us better. Um, as much as we all would like to put COVID 19 in the rear view mirror, we can't. Uh, you know, we don't have a high level of infections, but it's one here, one there, almost weekly. But it's really, we talked, I think, in one of the committee meetings, it's, it's really the change in attitude. We, so we preach for almost two and a half years. If you don't feel well, don't come to work. Well, unfortunately, unfortunately or unfortunately, people are heeding that advice. So our daily absenteeism, even with new programs, is going on. If someone's not feeling well, we don't want them. But that affects daily operation in a way that we've not seen. So we're struggling. We're struggling there too. Um, Blink 182, um, we talked about that, but it, it really is, um, it could be, you know, one of those transformational projects. Um, and, you know, we've assigned Jamie Caslow and, and, and Kelly Schwartzel to it. Their departments are working on it full time. Um, and we talked about that balance, right? There's, there's got to be a balance of, of things that are on the app. Uh, there's got to be hardcore stuff that we need employees to pay attention to. That's in our hub. There's a hub of things. I mean, there's all kinds of HR forms already in the hub. And then there's got to be some lighthearted, you know, fun things that people, you know, will want to go there to, to check out. So we're incentivizing use of things of that nature. But, you know, to have 300 or so people sign on onto their own personal device, uh, it's, I think a step in the right direction. August 28th, that's the day when we start the new routes uh, in, in Montgomery County. Uh, I happened to talk to the county executive this morning. He's pleased with where we are and, and how things are progressing. Um, signature universal access uh, agreements already with the city school district, St. Mary's Hospital, and John's got a few more up his sleeve. So before we even start service, I think we have built-in <coughs> ridership, which, which I think is, is going to put everything up. Um, all the seasonal things are, are deployed or to be deployed. That's everything from Grafton Lakes to nature buses, Saratoga trolley, uh, bikes, e-bikes, scooters, uh, all that stuff that we now do um, is out there. Um, so I hope you are pleased to be back. That's, I can tell you that I couldn't wait to get down the hall. Um, really appreciate everybody's patience. It was a difficult uh, couple of months here, at least up here, where we had to relocate people and squeeze people in. But you know, for the past couple of years, we, you know, without we didn't see it. The maintenance department had to move almost daily. The transportation department had to move.
move things around. Lots of disruption. You know, we, I remember saying, how are we going to move all of the people who park back here to our new parking lot across the street? That, that happened almost seamlessly. Uh, people now don't even remember parking in the new building. We eliminated all that traffic, which was causing some of the accidents that Richmond saw. So all of that uh, got done. So appreciate that. Uh, July 8th, if you can cancel that, I think Jamie's already sent it out. But we're going to have a little ribbon cutting out back, uh, expansion, and we're going to have a little cookout for our employees and we're try to get you know, the construction guys and gals back and thank them for their hard work. And then you get to see the new bus watch. Actually, wash or actually doing a much better job, right? Dave, it's amazing when you replace 30 year old units. What happened? That's all good. Uh, as Pete said, I'm glad that uh, some of you were able to join us at our awards uh, dinner. Um, it's been three years since we had the dinner. Um, we didn't get everyone that we wanted to, but we had about 270 people. And uh, we celebrated safety and attendance, the things we talk about uh, all the time. So more to come on events. We're hoping to have our, our retiree lunch. You know, we'll bring back you know, people who worked here for so many years and built the place, so to speak. Uh, we're going to get outside and get another cookout and show them all the stuff you know, that, that, that's going on and changes here. Uh, more good news. Uh, last week I met with Dan Lynch. Dan came in for about an hour um, to begin the onboarding process. And, uh, Dan's deputy county uh, executive in uh, Albany and was uh, formerly the county attorney. So he knows of us, knows, uh, knows how we do things. And just in talking, there's so many parallels between what happens in, in county government and what happens here at CBTA, as, as you know, Jackie has shared with us. He, he'll be a valuable uh, addition to the board. And he's looking forward to it. So. He'll join us in August. We're going to do some touring and things like that. Uh, we're going to be onboarded. He's, he's, he's a good learner. So all good. Um, we're getting ready for summer. Well, I guess we're in summer, right? Uh, we're juggling all the stuff that you all juggle too. Who's here? Who's not here? Who's remote? Who's not remote? Who's got to get their kids to summer camp? Things of that nature. There's just a lot of stuff going on, so we, we don't we don't get the opportunity to do that. Thanks for covering my report. <laughs> That's the sign of good governance. I should also tell you, I did a uh, I was on a panel discussion at W W W W W several CEOs, all Kansas CEOs. The intent was to we spent about an hour talking. And uh, it's for the people who want to do this job. So it was all about governance, and working with boards, and working with chairs, and, you know, how to, all the Doug Eaton stuff that so many of you are used to. It was an interesting you know, hour listening, because we don't all do it the same way. And uh, we all have the Doug Bob, you have to tailor those for the organization. So it's, it's a nice way to kind of get reacquainted at time. He's done. He's alive and doing very, very well. Yeah, have fun. Anybody uh, have any questions of Pepper Carr? <laughs> Pepper, uh, <laughs> please, Pepper. Uh, That's part of the day. Or uh, if this is the uh, board member comment period, if there's anything else you want to bring up, vacation schedule, uh, what you're doing this weekend. <laughs> Other questions about the company? No? Uh, we do have an executive session matter that we would like to discuss. So at this time, uh, it's 12.55. I would like to convene the board in executive session by getting a motion to move into executive session to discuss a legal litigation matter. So moved. Thank you, George. You second? Second. Thank you, Joe. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, then we'll, we'll jump into this for a few minutes. Okay, it's uh, it's 1.05 p.m. We are back in public session following the executive session. Uh, we have a motion uh, before us, resolution uh, 30, 2022. 
to settle a, a claim, a lit litigation claim, number L1940312. Uh, I think that's the right number, right? Uh, so I'll take a motion to, uh, to uh, uh, for this resolution, to approve the resolution. Second. Thank you, Denise. Second by Peter. Any questions about it? Comments? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is approved. Um, no other business. Uh, we'll reconvene at the end of uh, August. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Look how important we are. We've got one person so Thank you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Thank, you, thank you, Mike. And we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Oh.